Hello everybody, so in today's video I fought since there just was a release uh, of OpenBSD 7.4 is out so I think we t should take some time to install it actually or do a little install how-to. First of all as you can see I got VirtualBox running here I already booted the ISO file which you can find in OpenBSD.org um, process is pretty simple, create a new virtual machine, um, set the desired number of CPU cores, RAM, I mostly go for one gig of RAM and maybe one or two cores depending on what you need. In this virtual machine I allocated two CPU cores and one gigabyte of RAM. First thing you see when you boot OpenBSD is you get the boot prompt, the boot manager. There is nothing much to do except press enter. This will boot OpenBSD and we will soon find ourselves at the install prompt or the installer rather. So let's give this a second. Also hope the resolution is high enough. I scaled it up a little bit since I have a larger monitor so it's easier to see that way. First of all we have options. Um, of course we want to do an install so we select I. We choose our keyboard language. In my case that will be DE. You can also enter L to have a list of all the available keyboard types. In my case it's DE. For English you would enter EN. Hostname. Oh, in this very case let's call it Puffy. The network interface, there's currently only one network adapter connected. So it would be EM0 for me. There we go. And you could just hit enter here, but I want to set up a static IP. So let me quickly do that. I will choose this IP and the net mask. Be careful that you set the correct net mask. In my case this would have almost been wrong. So there we go. V6, I don't have an IPv6 configuration at the moment. Network interface. You could do more here but in this very case that's it. Done. You need to set a default route and a domain name. Well let's call it obsd.lan. A DNS server well, just use the Google DNS server. You can, of course, use a local one as you desire. Choosing a super secure password here for the root user. And we want to start SSHD by default. Do we want to run the X-Window system? Nope. This is a headless system. And let's create a user. Let's call it user. Enter the password again. Allow SSH root logins. No, nope, we don't want to do that. Time zone is correct for me. Again, you can have a list. You can select whatever you need. In my case, it's correct. The disks. Currently, we have one disk. You can get some information about it. Again, you can tell this is inside a virtual box, so I'll just use that one. Do we want to encrypt the root disk? No, in this case, we do not want to. You can set GPT or use MBR, whatever you might need or look for. In this very case, we keep it simple. We just use the whole disk and we go with the default partition layout. I normally don't do that, but for simplicity's sake, we'll just go with the defaults, which are pretty adequate. There we go. And now we need to give the location of the sets. In this case, I've mounted the ISO as a virtual CD-ROM, so all the packages are already contained in there. Okay, you just need to hit enter. You could deselect packages here. If, for example, you want to have a bare minimum server installed, you could get rid of all the X stuff. Um, but to be honest, I only do full installs since it's not really hurting anything. So there we go. And yes, we want to continue it out and now it's running. The installation takes usually um, when you don't have to explain it or you don't have to orient yourself. It's a five to ten minute install at most. 
You can use auto install, something I haven't yet tried. Um, there is a nice FAQ entry in the OpenBSD FHQ. Um, I don't think it's quite hard to do, <laughs> I just simply haven't had the need for it. But overall, I mean the installation is quite simple. There's not really anything that could go wrong, I mean I'm sure most of you know installs like Archer Gen 2 which are more involved, but OpenBSD is quite simple. Okay, so it installed everything. Okay, we don't need to give it some other location, so we hit done. And the time would be correct for me. Yes, we can set that. And well, we're almost done. The only thing left to do would be rebooting, which will certainly happen in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Overall, um, installing OpenBSD is really not difficult. Same goes for FreeBSD. Um, to be honest, it's a very simple process, um, and you have a lot of things included already in the base system. So, we could use a shell if, if we want to make some modifications or change something. We could halt the machine or we could just reboot. In this very case, let me open my VirtualBox Manager shortly. And there it is. There's the OpenBSD machine. We will reboot, so I can just hit Enter. Alright. There we go. And it should boot. Let's see. It could be that I still need to unmount the CD-ROM. Not quite sure if um, it gets auto-ejected. Some distros do that. Can't honestly remember because I mostly have OpenBSD running on bare metal. But we'll find out. Yep, it's the installer. In this very case, let me just open the shell. And let's halt the machine. Alright, so let me go into settings, there we go, yep, we can power it off, it's now off, and yep, the ISO was still in there, let me remove that quickly, there we go, and okay, that's fine, there we go, now we're booting from the hard drive, so be sure to unmount the CD-ROM if you have it in there, um, again, some distros uh, use eject, especially in the Linux world, to eject the CD-ROM, which VirtualBox, of course, um, takes into consideration, but in this very case, it's not. It's not happening. So, we can see the demons are starting, and it checks for bin patches. Another great thing with OpenBSD is this patch. It makes updating a breeze very easy to do and it's just one command if you're root or if you have elevated privileges you can just run syspatch and the magic will happen so here we go we're logged in there we go and a final little thing i'm going to show you is we're gonna prepare do as conf because we want to also execute commands with higher privileges what we're going to do is first log in as root there we go. And the VI editor is already shipped. Create a etsyduas.conf. And we keep it simple here. Permit, no pass, and our username. Save and quit. There we go. And now you can see if I run duas ls, we have super user privileges or root privileges. So that was it for this video. If you want to shut down the machine, you can do a halt P. In my very case, I'm going to plan to do a little bit more fiddling here. So, thank you all for watching. See you next time.